batteries. Can't stand them, but they're a necessity in many situations. Spent a lot of time in RV traveling around, and well, I learned a good bit about batteries and what I need to do in order to extend the life of batteries in order to keep them in good condition. So I have two types right here. This is your traditional wet battery, right? So this is what you're pretty much probably used to being in your car, being a lead acid battery, uh, and they call it a wet battery. Behind that is something newer called a lithium or a LiPo4 battery. Now lithiums have their advantages over a wet cell. Wet cell has their advantages over a lithium, but overall in a perfect world, you're getting 50% capacity out of this battery. And what I mean by that is you don't want to run it below 50% because it'll damage the battery. A lithium ion you can run down indefinitely theoretically, but typically a lot of them have some type of battery management system in there or some thresholds that won't allow you to drain them completely. Another advantage of these are if they're left off a charger, they don't drain as fast or really at any, uh, whereas these start to, well, deteriorate quite quickly. They'll start draining power and in a situation in an RV, you know, that's not that great. So this is about, what, 80 amp hour battery. This is 100 amp hour. So really out of this, you're only getting 40 usable amp hours before you're causing damage. This, you'll get the whole thing. Another advantage is they're about a third less in the weight. So this battery is much less in terms of weight than something like a wet battery would be. So overall, just a good uh, solution for an RV. However, if you're in extremes, whether it be super hot or super cold in specific, lithium ion battery isn't going to perform as well as the wet cell battery. So in cold conditions, you still want to use this. So again, those are just some brief advantages as to why I like using lithium, especially in applications like um, my drawer projects, which I'll showcase later um, in another video series or in my RV. Now, when it comes to Battleborn batteries, what I have found is they're interesting. Each LiPo likes to be charged at a different voltage. Most LiPos want to be at about 14.8 volts when they're going through their absorption phase. And that just means when it's charging the battery. Now, Battleborns are unique in what they want for charging. Most batteries like this, lithium, want 14.8 volts when charging. However, Battleborn's a little unique in that it wants 14.4 for charging. Now, during the float or storage, it wants 13.6. Now, because of that, it makes it very hard to find a charger. So I'm a big fan of Victron chargers. This is a 15 amp Bluetooth smart charger. And one of the cool things about this is I can use two types of tar charging to get what I need for the Battleborn. So with this particular charger, if I'm charging at a normal charge, that's gonna give me 14.4 volts. Now, technically this would be used for something like a wet battery, but because this Battleborn in specific wants 14.4, this Victron in the normal charge works really well. Now I'll charge that normally all the way through the different phases in the bulk and the absorption phase in order to give it what it wants. And that's 14.4, nothing more, nothing less. The only problem is it, when it moves to float or it moves to storage at normal, it's gonna be about 13.8 volts. Now I don't want that because what the Battleborn wants is 13.6. So once I go into the float stage, I simply just move it over to the lithium ion phase. Uh, it will start absorbing again, but you'll notice on the application, there won't be any amps. So it just sits there for about 30 minutes, then it moves into the float and it keeps that float at 13.6. So I highly recommend this Victron charger. I'll have links to everything, not affiliate link. I just wanted to get this out there because it can be confusing. I couldn't find anything else online. Uh, about lithium batteries and what they needed other than from the manufacturer. It was really difficult finding the right charger, but I really do, like I said, tr trust Victron, uh, both in chargers, uh, solar controllers, pure sign inverter that I'm using in another build uh, that I'll showcase in a later video, but not paid by them, not endorsed by them. I just like their products. Bluetooth application here as well, so you can monitor all the things I'm talking about. Uh, and if you have a Battleborn, this is the charger you want. So with that, I'll see you next time. Shoot.